take a thumbs up. Yeah. All right, perfect. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, my name is Stacey Brennan, and I'm the Curator of Education at the Lehigh University Art Galleries. If you're not familiar with us, we are a free museum that is located on Lehigh University's campus, and we have nearly 17,000 works of art in our collection from all over the world. Um, so we are a great resource, and once um, we reopen, we would love for you to come visit us. We also have lots of outdoor sculptures. Um, after your workshop today, we'd love for you to share your creations with us. You could tag us online or email it to us and I'll send you the information um, after the workshop. Um, but we have lots of resources on our website, including this workshop. We'll add this there afterwards. So if you're interested in more activities, um, we have button making, we have all kinds of art making workshops. Um, you can visit us at luag.org. Um, and today, we are going to talk about an exhibition that we have on view called Doing Democracy. So democracy is how people can be active and participate in civic issues and also in the elections. Um, and we were donated lots of photographs, almost 2,000 photographs that um, have everything to do with uh, Americans and our voting process and equality in America. And we had students from Lehigh University help us select these photographs or curate them to put them into an exhibition. And in the exhibition, we grouped photographs together in different ways to tell stories about equality in the United States and also kind of the voting process. Um, so here are just some pictures of how we arranged photographs in the gallery. Um, and so here's a great example of a photograph that we're going to look at more closely today. Um, and this is a photograph of the March on Washington, which took place in 1963. Um, and this is where people in America were fighting for um, Black and African American people's right to vote and to participate in an equal kind of workforce um, and for them to have the same vote right, rights to vote and participate in democracy. Um, and so these are examples of some of the people who are kind of really influential in making this happen. Um, this here on the left is Willie Ricks. He was part of a um, leading the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which led peaceful protests um, throughout the United States to kind of advocate for equality. And on the right, we have a woman, her name's Fannie Lou Hamer, who also did the same um, for women's rights, but also for um, Black and African American people. Um, we have examples of people who kind of stood up for what they believe in. The woman in the center here is um, telling this man to kind of that everyone should have equal rights and she was advocating for that. Um, this is um, Congressman um, um, John Lewis, who, um, you know, recently passed away, but was really influential. One of the youngest speakers to speak in the March on Washington. Um, and then we kind of just have pictures that look like they could be taken today, um, which is pretty crazy to think that these pictures that were taken over 40 or 50 years ago, um, some of these issues are still a problem today. So that's why we're going to talk about ways that we as people in our community and as individuals can talk about things that we care about um, and ways that we can um, kind of be active about telling others uh, what, what's important to us in our community. So these are some pictures that we're looking at. And so we wanted to just kind of look at the posters that are in these photographs from this exhibition, Doing Democracy, because they show how using different typefaces or fonts, um, we can kind of show um, and draw attention to certain words that we're advocating about or um, telling people about or messages and kind of how we can highlight different things using um, lettering and using design. Um, we have another example here, which is also from the March on Washington in 1963. We can see the Capitol building in the background in Washington, D.C. And then we see here, these were people, is there something um, that you notice about some of the signs that are here? What are some things that you notice about the signs in the picture here? You can unmute yourself if you want to, or you could put it in the comments. Anybody notice anything about this? I like something. I want to say something. Um, can I? 
Uh-oh, you're muted. Oh, we can't hear you, Mia. Some of the signs were in Spanish. Some of the signs are in Spanish, yeah. I appreciate that you noticed that. So we have both um, English speakers and Spanish speakers here kind of all fighting for the same thing or kind of trying to get their message out. What else do we notice? Were these created on a computer or do we think these were created by hand? Also things that we might notice are what is on the signs there. So I bet our moms here can kind of talk about, but 50 cents for meat is pretty cheap, right? And these people are advocating that they shouldn't have to pay for a $1. So that could give us an idea of what time period this was taken in. Um, it was taken many years ago, 40 years ago. So the price of meat was a lot less back then. But at that time, 50 cents was a lot of money. So people were um, trying to get their message out that they shouldn't have to spend so much money to buy kind of what the necessities were. Um, but I also love how we can see different ways that they use the same message, um, both in square posters here and circular posters, and then in Spanish and English. And here we have um, another picture, which I love the way that um, these men were using hand lettering for um, their grocery store. So if we go to the farmer's market today, we kind of see similar things, but it's interesting to see how they were drawing attention to the price of things here and also how cheap it was um, to buy those things. So I'm going to turn it over to our teaching artists today. Um, a lot of these images, and if you would like to learn more about doing democracy, are on our website. But we're so lucky to have Lauren back here today, who um, has a business called Renan Inc., where she teaches lots of classes and does lettering and sells um, all kinds of beautiful things um, and, do, and does her own design work. And she's going to teach us how to create our own posters to kind of bring about um, issues that we care about and to, to draw attention to them and to create our own posters, um, whether it could or it could be for buttons on your backpack or all kinds of things. So um, we're lucky to have Lauren here. Thank you, Lauren. I'm going to turn it over to you and allow you to share your screen. Thanks, Stacy. Uh, it's so great to see all of you guys. I'm Lauren, and like Stacy said, I am an artist that specifically does uh, hand lettering. I also illustrate, but hand lettering is when I draw all of my letters. I don't use fonts like on a computer, so it takes a whole lot more time, but in my opinion, it makes it look really special because it's handmade. So I love doing it, and I love to teach doing it too. All right, so I am gonna share my screen and you're gonna see an above view of what I'm doing in front of me so that you can follow along. Okay, here we go, friends. Let's check it out. Hopefully it works. Haha. -ha. all right, see my hands? All righty, so I'm just gonna take you through a really quick presentation and you've been so great already listening in and hearing some history from Stacy. that was so awesome. Um, but I want to show you quickly, I want to talk to you about what it means to be an activist. So this is a big word, but um, the idea of an activist is that I want you to look at the world around you and decide for yourself what you care about. Oh, sure. <laughs> Emily, uh, that's my daughter, Emily, by the way, and uh, she's taking a quick break. All right, so ask yourself some questions about the world around you. So here's some things that you might wanna think about. Do you love animals? Do you, is nature and environment important to you? Are you someone who wants peace in the world? So these are kind of questions you can start thinking about. Um, what are my opinions about the world around me in my community and just my country and the world? Um, so these are some topics that kids care a lot about, but I want you to think about what matters to you. And then once you figure out what you wanna say, speak up, use your voice and tell others by simply saying what you believe in out loud. Someone might say, you know what? You're right, let's change that. Let's do something about that. And that's the beginning of real change. 
All right, so we can make activism posters. This is just one way that we can use art in order to show what we care about. We can make big posters we can raise in the air. We can make little ones like Emily suggested for our dolls earlier. Um, but how do we make the best poster so that we make our message stand out? Well, we've got four tips for you. So the first one is be clear and direct. So keep your phrases short and sweet. Lots of words get confusing. All right, so like these things right here, like I love this power to the people. That's a really short phrase and they added some flowers in there too. This one just simply says vote, but look at how cool these drop shadows have stars in them. But it's very impactful when you have one big message. We will still, still we rise is another one. So what will your message say? What I want you to do is take a piece of scrap paper and start writing some down some ideas because we're gonna make that in a sec. All right, next one. Next one, be clever. So try to think of a cool spin on what you care about. Um, make your phrases memorable, sometimes even adding humor. This one I think is really kind of funny, but it's very important and it gets the message across. Instead of finding Nemo, this woman saying she's losing Nemo. So she's speaking out about how um, the oceans are really important to save and she wants to keep all the fish safe. So losing Nemo kind of gets the message ac across in a really clever way. So how can you make your message memorable? Next one, this is my favorite part, is use images. So support your words with pictures. I love to draw and I hope you do too. So you can use um, images like a mouth um, or this one is beautiful. It says long live our uh, 4 billion year old mother. So it's got a nature theme to it. The fist is often used as like an empowerment symbol. And this one says history has its eyes on us and it's a, an eye that's crying. So think about a symbol, something really simple that you can use in your poster. Um, but ask yourself what images will go along with your message? What pictures are you gonna show? Last one, it's not all about looking pretty, you guys. Make sure that you uh, find out about what you support, be informed. That means sometimes studying up on the topic that you care a lot about. Try to get as much knowledge as you can so you can tell people all about it. Um, and make sure you make a message on your poster that supports your cause, not something that breaks down opposing opinions. And what I mean by that is sometimes we get angry, right? Because we care a lot about something. And sometimes our message is a very angry message. But what I want you to do is try to go positive. Messages of positivity are proven to be more effective. So if you have something really uh, positive and uplifting to say, that will get your message across even better. So let's create a poster. All right, you ready? You listened so nicely to all of that. And now we're time, it's time to create. So first we need an idea. So what I want you to do is grab a scrap piece of paper and write down some ideas on what your poster might say. So I've got my pencil, or you can just jot it down on anything, on junk mail, whatever. All right, so here are some ideas if you're having trouble thinking of something to say. If you're a little scared that you won't have enough time to finish your poster, try to find a, the shortest phrase possible, okay? or you can come up with your own phrase. So I'm gonna write down, I really like the word speak up. So I'm gonna write that down. And right now I want you to think of what do you want your poster to say? All right, we're gonna use words. We're gonna use our voice in a visual way. So I'll give you a second to do that. Meanwhile, I'm gonna close down my iPad and I'm gonna bring my scrap paper over here that I have. Okay, you should have a pencil. This is a mechanical pencil, but you can use any kind of pencil. I'm gonna get my eraser, because like I said before, I make tons of mistakes all the time. It's okay. And then I have a ruler, but you could also use like the edge of a book to draw a straight line if you need straight lines, it's up to you. Okay, so let's go over doing some shifting around here. Bear with me. OK, 
Okay. I made this little guide and I'm actually going to um, zoom out a little bit so you can see a little better on what I'm doing here. Okay. Looks good. I have this packet that I created myself. I kind of did little funny illustrations to go along with it. But this is actually a guide in order to make a really successful sign, all right? You don't have to use this necessarily for activism posters. You can just use this for making signs for projects, to make signs for, I don't know, Halloween if you wanted. Um, all of these guides help you out. So that's what I'm here to do to teach you today. So we're gonna start by using boxes to lay out where we want our, our um, poster, where we want our words to go. So I'm gonna quick draw a big box and I'm just sketching this out so you can see how I start as an artist, as a lettering artist, how I lay things out. And it's really super simple, okay? Now I have two words, speak up. I am actually going to create a box where my words are gonna go. Can we do more than one? Yeah, go for it. Emily just asked, can we do more than one sketch? Absolutely, for sure. Um, if you have lots of ideas, maybe draw them all out and then see which one's your favorite that you can commit to, okay? So look, I made the word speak is a little longer than the word up. So I made my box for speak bigger and then my box for up because a little it's a smaller word. because this is a bigger word, exactly. Now, I'm gonna leave a little space down here because I'm gonna add a little icon or a little um, symbol down here, I think. But um, I'm going to create my boxes and I'm actually gonna draw this little dotted line. You may recognize this from school when you would do, <laughs> um, when you would do handwriting exercises but that's the layout of my poster. That's how I know where it's going to lay, where my letters are gonna lay. Okay, back to this. So we did step one, sketch layout using boxes. We're gonna hop over and you can draw with me by the way, I hope you are. We're gonna go to number two. We're gonna draw light skeleton frames for our letters, okay. So I'm going to create lines where my letters go and I wanna make sure there's enough, work, enough space so that I know I have um, enough space for all the letters to fit or else you'll have a mistake like this one I illustrated right here, which is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. All right, so thin lines for our letters and we're gonna do bold block letters for this, this uh, project. All right, I'm going to write the word speak. Well, I'm gonna start with up. So up is only two letters. So that's pretty easy to lay out. U, P, up. See how I laid out my letters? I made sure that they hit the top part of my box, hit the bottom, and then hit the middle for my P. See that? That's gonna lay out my letters really beautifully. All right, speak is a little harder to write. S-P-E-A-K. Now, what a lot of my students tend to do is they squish their letters too much or they don't have enough space. So what I want you to do is count the amount of letters and find out where your center is. My center letter is E. I'm gonna put that in there, E. And then I'm going to write in my other letters. I'm gonna write in other letters. And I know you guys all know your letters, but make sure that when you're drawing them rather than writing them, like if you were to write like a grocery list or something, <laughs> milk, eggs, all that good stuff. You're just writing it down and you're not worrying about your letters being drawn in a special space. So there's, there's all my letters. That looks pretty good. And then I think I'm going to put a drawing down here, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to leave that for later. Okay, now it's time to bold your letters. Okay, we're going to take this actually to our poster now. 
and we're gonna draw out our space on there. Okay, so here we go. Got my sketch. And I wanna use one of these boards. Emily, what, which one would you like? I'm gonna use the back of my, my sketch pad. Would you like a back uh, of the sketch pad too? Sure. This one too? Okay, cool. It's also like not like yeah. a light brown. It's like it's kind of like a pink or red. Yeah, it's kind of like a pinky red brown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pinky red brown. Pinky red brown. Yep. <laughs> That's technical. All right. Here we go. So I've got my board. Now this is a lot bigger, huh? But I at least know where my um my words are gonna go. So I'm just gonna start sketching out where my words are gonna go. Speak and then up, right? I'm not being very careful about this. You can use a ruler if you want. Oh, that looks good. I love it. All right, here we go. Now I'm feeling confident about this because I did my sketch. There's my skeleton for up. And then we know that the E is gonna go in the middle here. E, A, K. And if you're having trouble laying this out, there's no shame in asking one of your parents or maybe an older sibling to help you out, right? No shame. I'll actually drop this down. And guys, I, I'm an artist that does this all the time. So don't be stressed out if yours look different than mine or if you need more practice, it's really okay. Okay, there are my lines, speak up. And like I said, I'm gonna put something down here. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do. Okay, so. Now it's time to make my letters nice and bold. So I have here, bold your letters. Say it loud and proud. You're gonna make your letters nice and bold and that means nice and thick so you can see it from far away. Okay, you okay? All right, good. Now, I'm gonna go right into my coloring tools, but if you need to, to um, use, if you need to use um, your pencil to do this and you need to do that step, that's a-okay. Um, I'm gonna go right into my coloring tools so I can make this quickly for you, okay? So here we go. What does it mean to bold your letters? Well, basically what I am going to do, I'm gonna use black so you can see it really well. I'm gonna make my letters thicker. So I have this skeleton here. What I'm gonna do is I call it adding meat on the bones. I'm gonna use my marker to make this line even thicker. So I'm just gonna make this nice and thick. I can use the side of my marker. If you have a nice thick marker to use, you can also see how I do that. You can also draw a box for your letter and then fill it in. We're gonna make our letters nice and thick because when you make a poster, the most important thing is not to make it super fancy. It's not to make it a work of art that could hang in a museum, even though we love museums, right, Stacey? It's not meant to be that. It's meant to be something people read. And for activism posters, you wanna get your message across right away. You don't want anyone to be like, wait, what does that say? You want them to be able to read it. So that's why we choose to make our letters super duper bold. Okay. 
This could also be called adding weight to your letters in the wetter in the wettering world. The lettering world. What am I even saying? I don't know. Who knows, right? This is called adding weight. So you are making boxes to go around those skeleton lines. You're adding meat on the bones. <laughs> All right, looking good so far. I like it, I like it. I can always go in and, and color a little better because my, my coloring might be a little messy, but this is looking good. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you, this here, the second page of my digital downloads has all the directions on how to do this. And then it also has all the letters. So if you're like, hmm, how does an M exactly work? Because M's are kind of a little tricky um, in the way they're constructed. This shows you exactly how a block letter M should look, okay? Also W's I find to be a little tricky for people. So you can refer to this, this is really important. Okay, making this nice and thick. I'm using my thick part of my, of my, um, marker and this is coming down like that. This is like an easy way to do it with like the side of your marker. I'm sure you guys have some of these bold markers at home. Maybe you have some Sharpies. We can use crayons. Those work too. You just uh, have to do a little more coloring. That's okay. Nice bold line going down. If they aren't exactly straight, it's okay, but make sure you're hitting that bottom of your box, right? Because that's why we made the boxes so that we know that our letters don't like go or like come up at all. Like we made our great boxes. Oh, I love it. Emily's doing hers. Love, love, love. Aw, you're a cutie. All right, nice bold letters. Speak up. Use your voice. And also, if you make a mistake, you uh -huh. can always erase it. And oh yes. Do it. Oh, or you do. can, um, or you can trace over it what you actually want to do and then erase it. Please do. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Emily just reminded me if you need to erase those box lines, these are going to be erased later, right? Because you don't want those lines when you have your activism poster. You just want the letters. You don't want there to be any lines in the way. You can erase those lines and then, wow, they look great. They look really cool. Speak up. What color should I use for this one? Hmm. Red. Sure. I like red. Oh, when you're doing your posters and your coloring, my suggestion for you is use very few colors. If you use all different colors, sometimes it gets a little confusing. Now. Although this is kind of cool. This says vote, but um, here, I'll put it here so you can see it. This says <laughs> vote and I, I made it on an angle. I made my box go on an angle and I used like a rainbow pattern in the background. That's using a lot of colors for sure. But when you're doing your lettering, try, try to use bold letters, like uh, only a few, a limited color palette because that'll help really get your message across and hit home. Speak up. Okay. This up, you know what? I'm gonna erase these just a bit because they're a little dark. I drew really dark so you guys could see it, but try to use light lines. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna make my U and P even bolder than the other one. So look how I do that. I draw like a box around my skeleton. I'm adding meat on the bones. Like that, kind of curve around, try and keep it even, right? The, the lines should be parallel to each other, these outer lines. And then this curve is a little hard, but go slow, right? And also you don't have to make it perfect. True. Emily just reminded me these are hand lettered signs. They don't have to be perfect. You're and right. also you're um, smart. You can also make them for like um 
like birthday parties and stuff. Oh so my like, gosh, yes. So like you can do like happy birthday and like cursive. Beautiful, yeah. You can make nice bold signs for birthdays. Who doesn't love festivals. a handmade festivals? Sure, when we can go, right? <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't love a big, bold sign for a birthday or a congratulations? Or let's see, what else would you celebrate with a sign? Hmm. A graduation, maybe, or... For Spanish oh. people, for, um, for um, Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead. Sure, if you mm -hmm. celebrate that. Wow, that was a good idea. Halloween, you can make spooky Halloween. posters. Christmas. Oh yeah, any holiday really. I'm making this one right. for Valentine's Day. Oh, what Day. if you're having a garage sale? You can um, make a sign. Let's say your family is like gonna have a garage sale. It's just be like, I got the sign you guys, I'm good. I'm gonna make sale, you know, nice and bold. Yeah, go ahead. All right, speak up. This is looking great. Okay. I might be speeding through. You might be still working on your letters. Rose but is no. on. No, no way. Yeah. See, Holy moly, you're a quick it's worker. It's so what? Oh. oh it's where it, Here you um, go. Go ahead. Tell them what it is. So this right here is uh, chickens on farms when people kill their eggs. And also... Uh, Show her the rainforest. The rainforest is getting cat on fire. So I'm like, don't get cat on fire. Then, then like, uh, I showed an animal a bunch of trash. Because animals don't like trash. Yeah. Then on fawns, uh, there's sheep that are in cages right here. There's a sheep in a cage. And also there's this kind of fish that is ugly. And I was like, and then there was a person laughing. And then it says, save the animals. So does the fish feel bad because people are laughing at it? Yeah. Oh, that's, good job, Lenny. No, uh, it's not a touch screen. So there we go. I got it. Rose, that's beautiful. All about how you should respect the, the earth and animals and love them and care for them. Bravo, girl. Great job. Is anyone else, uh, do you want, I know maybe some of you aren't finished, but do you want to share what you're working on? Anyone? Just go ahead and unmute yourself and, and you can share. I'm going to keep going with my drawings here. Uh, Fiona wanted to share. Go ahead, Fiona. Yes. Yeah. I did a sign. It says, be happy. And I'm going, I'm going around the bubble letters with highlighter. <gasps> Excellent. And you added a symbol there with a smile face. Mm -hmm. That's great. That gets your message right across. You have a happy face and you're like right in your brain. You know exactly what it's all about. Good job. Ours are more for our dolls, I think, because we're using small ones. But mine is um, protect Mother Earth. Yes. Beautiful, Stacy. So thinking the same as Rose, trying to protect our environment, right? And save Mother Earth and our animals. That's right. Great job. All right, if anyone else wants to share, please this. go right ahead. I'm gonna keep drawing. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a uh, special icon here and I'm not sure what I wanna do yet. I was gonna do like a mouth, but I think I want to do, oh, I know. This is a cool um, idea for adding interest to your, Posters, uh, use arrows. Arrows are always good because they direct your eyes. So I'm gonna draw a an arrow going off my page because it's speak up. So it's giving you that up and 
it brings your eye right up to the message. So I'm gonna do that. Let me see, I want a color. Oh, I'm gonna steal this purple, this purple's cool. Okay, I don't need it anymore. You don't need it anymore, cool. Nope. Speak up. Make these bold and colorful too. I hate when it does that. Oh, I know. Do you want to use a regular pencil? No. Okay. Sometimes the mechanical pencils break on us. All right. Speak up. Okay. Now, there are other cool ways that you can add fun touches to your letters. You guys ready for this? Okay. Got my letters. Got my boldness for my letters. And if you check out the sheet, right on the bottom here, there are some suggestions on how to make your letters even more bold and exciting. Beautiful. Even more bold and exciting. And also oh, making- it's pointing up to this. Yep. <laughs> also making them extra special. The first one is called an inline. And that is exactly what it sounds like. It is a line inside your letter. So since I, can't really go over my black. I'm going to use a paint um, pen. These are fun. I don't know if you guys know these. Can I use a black. Go for it. You might have to share though. Okay. Should. Sharing is caring. Where should I? In line. So it's a line that goes literally inside your letters. So that, look how that makes it pop, you guys. Looks awesome. It's kind of like bringing back the skeleton that we went over, but look what it does. It's like, it kind of makes this really cool, bold look, makes it pop. And that's what we want. We want people to see our message. And this is just one way you can do it. Now, parents, if you're like, what tool are you using? These are some paint markers that I found online. Um, I have a whole bunch of them in all different colors, but I really like black and white. That makes me kinda, that makes me happy. Black and white ones. All right, I use them for so many different projects. Okay, and the word up. So there's other ways you can make words um, pop and you can add outlines. Like I think it was Rose who said that she used highlighter or was it Fiona? They used it was Fiona, okay, cool. She used highlighter to go around her letters to make an outline. You guys know how to do that. You can also make a boundary box. So in this image, I used the B and I made a box around it. You could literally make a box around your letters. I have an example here. Or I can do this. I like this too. You like that one too? I have an example here that I did boxes around we stand together. So that's kind of cool. There we go. You got that. I like how that, that makes it look like your words are coming off of the page the way that you do Yeah. It. Very cool. You like that? Yeah, I drew some lines. <laughs> that's my face now. <laughs> so that's, that's the way that I did it. Um, yeah, I like that too. Thank you. And then the other one is called a drop shadow. Now this is a little tricky to get, but I like to add, I like to pretend like the light is hitting on my letters. And I like to add a shadow to my letters. So I'm gonna do that for the word up, just like this. And I could go into a whole lesson on how to teach you guys how to do this. But if you're really curious, I'm sure you can find an online resource to learn drop shadows. But this is generally the idea. My shadow is gonna to go to one side of my letters. And this, this kind of kids often say, whoa, it looks 3D. That's right, you're making your letters pop. You're making them look 3D. That's fun to try. So give it a shot. If you didn't get it exactly right, no worries. I'm sure you can find another cereal box or pizza box or something to work on, another poster. This is just one time. Wanna know something? Yeah, I do. I, I have a wiggly tooth. <gasps> That's exciting. I love it. So that's how you draw drop shadows. And then what do you think? Do I need some lines or something in here? I think I need some lines. You could add dots, lines. I'm gonna add some lines to really 
make that fill that space, but not add too many pictures. Like we're not about adding a whole scene, right? I'm not drawing a landscape here. I'm not drawing like a bunch of people. I mean, you could, but it might take away from your message. That's the most important thing right here is your message. I'm gonna add an outline on my arrow because I think that'll really look good. Speak up, use your voice people. And parents, make sure you encourage your kids to do it too, to speak up about what they care about. When I was a kid, I didn't really know that I could have an opinion on the world around me, you know? It wasn't really a popular thing to um, do when, uh, you know, back in the 80s, is like speak up for what you care about. But I think right now what's, it's amazing, great. I think what's great right now is that kids um, are learning that their, their voice matters. There's so many young activists out there um, that are speaking up and making a real difference. And um, just encourage your kids to always have opinions and about the world around them and that'll make them great leaders for the future. So this is awesome. I love doing this with you guys. Now I'm gonna stop my share because I'm pretty done with my poster speak up. And if I wanted to go the extra mile, you know what I could do? I could take my ruler or it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Emily made one call that says love, love, love. And this looks like a heart with like, um, almost like a parachute coming out of it or something. Yeah. I love it. It's, just like it's a house. design. It's a design. <laughs> a heart All right. Heart. If you want to take your ruler, you can tape it to the back and make like a cool, got some tape somewhere. Make like a cool uh, handle to hold up your sign. And these, um, this light cardboard is a really good thing to use. Cause you then... need that. Speak up, looks good. You could use a stick from your yard. You could use a oh. wrapping paper. Um, sometimes they have like thicker uh, tubes inside. Or you can like connect. Recycled stuff. Or you can like connect like or you can like glue caps. Or you can just hold it up because that works too. Or you can like too. glue colorful caps and then put them on. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Cool. I'd love to see what you're making if anyone wants to share. Hi there, we're gonna share. So the girls really love the game Among Us. And I, I'm not sure, some of the kids look a little younger so they might not be familiar with this game. I don't know uh, that. So this is Nora's, and uh -huh. at the end of each round of the game, it says who was the imposter or wasn't the imposter. Uh -huh. and so Nora, um, do you want to read what you wrote? Donald Trump was the imposter, and I'm not sure I put every vote matters. Wow. Yeah, because there's like a little spaceship that goes across the um, screen at the end of each round. And then Sarah has an Earth. Do you want you want to read what it says first? Um, it has a little earth being ejected from the spaceship saying the earth was not the imposter. And I'm going to write save the earth. Yes. There's like trash floating in this in space as well. So I, I that's your earth message that it's not the imposter. And then I made... Now that I look at it in the reflection, I can see that I need to trace the outline of this eye even more. So I wrote, history has its eyes on us, which is, um, has its eyes on you from Hamilton. Correct. But I like this uh, saying because it shows uh, personal responsibility of all of us. So thank you. Wonderful job. Thank you. I also wanted to recommend to you guys, because I know you're a bit older, but I have this great book that I found called Youth to Power. And if you guys are really interested in activism and learning more about how you can really make a difference as a young person, um, which is, I think is so important. Um, this is a great book. It's written by a high schooler. So check it out, Youth to Power. Okay. Thank great you. Job, you guys. Thank you. Hi, Emily. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. This is so amazing. I, I just painted these alpacas. <laughs> oh, I love them. You are quite crafty. The names. This one is named after my name, R-S-O. 
kind, kind of like O-S-E, but different. different. And this one called Mama. Beautiful. You are so crafty. I love it. Anything else you guys want to share? I saw some posters being held up earlier that looked amazing. Anyone else? Oh, Ooh. yes. <laughs> Voters going to vote. <laughs> I love that. That's great, Dana. Good job. <laughs> Beautiful lettering, by the way. Oh, but I forgot what I wanted to do it about. Go ahead. Awesome job. Oh, Stacy, just those little added touches. Beautiful. Beautiful. And if you're wondering, maybe is my is my poster bold enough? If you're if you're expecting to bring it to a, you know protests or like hang it up in your window or something. You could ask a friend, like, I'm going to go a little further I from you. Up. Can you read it from back here? So you can kind of uh, ask up. that question. Okay. I like I oh, that's okay. Hey, it's recycled items. We're making art out of it. If you mess Maybe up, I can just like cut this off. You can cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Does anyone have any questions for me about, be, about lettering or illustration or anything? No. We'll keep on creating and I hope you get a chance to visit the gallery and look at all the awesome photographs too. That would be a really good, a good chance to oh, no, see some um, historic pieces. Oh yes, you're right. Yes! Vote, vote! Awesome. I did this one earlier too. Use your voice. This was for a button design, but I blew it up. So even if I, I took it to like a, a poster store and like blew it up, I could make this into a circle like, shaped uh, sign. I could cut it out or just like this on a piece of poster board. And then I did this one. Vote. Yeah, Mia. Vote. That's right. Good job, girlfriend. <laughs> I love it. At the end, I'd love to get everyone to hold up their signs together. Cool, let's do it. Awesome. That's okay, you can still hold yours up. Do you wanna cut it? Or scissors right there? Oh, I don't know. That looks great, nice and bolded. The eye looks a lot more bolded. Very good. What do you care about? It's very hard to cut. Oh, do you want some help? Yeah, that maybe we should cut it with an exacto. No, honey, I think we should cut it with an exacto knife. You can just hold it up and put something else over it. Here, you can hold it up with this over it. Just hold it up like that. that works. Yeah, yeah. Emily made love, love. All you need is love. Awesome. Wait, 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 so oh, okay. Very good. I like how you um, used the, you did the inline, didn't you, with those letters? Oh, I love the pride one, Ava. Oh, Ava, excellent. It's beautiful. Nice work. Did you use a cereal box from our cabinet? <laughs> it's not done. It's not done. That's all right. Get into some of those paint pens of mom's. That's my other daughter, Ava. She's a, she's also an artist. All right, should we hold them all up, Stacy? What do you think? All right, you ready to hold them up? Woohoo! Can you hold it up? All right, Adam, there you go. All right. Are you able to, to take a screenshot, Stacey? Yeah. I'm trying, everybody hold it up. <laughs> I didn't hold up your sign at the same time. These are wonderful. Nice work. Oh, this has been fun. Now we all have to hang them in our windows so we can continue to show everybody what we care about and what's important to us or bring them with us when we go places. That's right. 
what you what you care about matters, guys. And uh, more, now more than ever, okay? So keep speaking up for what you believe in and looking at your communities around you and what's important to you, okay? And pray great work. In democracy, as we're coming up, we're gonna help our parents vote. So thank you all for joining us today. We have another workshop that's coming up um, later in November, where we're gonna make story quilts that are inspired by Faith Ringgold. So we would love for you to join us for that. I'll email out information as well as a recording of our uh, workshop today and um, also the handouts that Lauren created so that you can continue to your own lettering at home as well. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you for a wonderful workshop. Bye. Take care, everyone. Yeah. Bye, friends. Bye.